So in the last class we have uh, discussed the we have completed the pyridine. Okay. So today we'll be starting the quinoline and isoquinoline. Let me share the slide. Okay. I think it is visible. Yes, sir. Uh, today we'll just have a uh, very introductory class uh, regarding mostly the, the structure and uh, synthesis. The next class on which we'll be discussing the uh, reactivity. Okay. So as I told, today's class will be on uh, quinoline and isoquinoline. Here we'll discuss mainly the structure and like uh, structure related information. Uh, synthetic group, different synthetic group of children and isoquinoline. So if you uh, look for quinoline, it is the, uh, the benzo fusion okay so when you fuse with pyridine that you know and uh, while giving the numbering you have to be careful your number always will start from the nearby the junction so it is junction nearby the junction we have four points right so you have one two three and four points so you have to start with one point in such a way that the heteroatom will get the least number. So you have here nitrogen, that means I have to definitely put one. When you are putting one, then your others numbering will be, it should complete the ring and then it will go to other. Okay, so that's why you have one, two, three, four, and then it is five. Okay. Now you have four here. So this one will be for A, and then five, six, seven, eight. So this one will be eight, eight. Okay. So this way we give the number of quinoline. Uh, it is isoelectronic with respect to pi uh, cloud or pi electrons uh, when you compare with the naphthalene. It is isoelectronic with respect to naphthalene. Now name. You can give scientific name, which is uh, benzo B pyridine. Now B means which is which is the bond uh, connected, okay, the junction. So this is B. So you have heteroatom and this carbon. You have A and then B and C. So the B is the common bond between uh, the benzene and the pyridine. So that's why this is B. So benzo B pyridine. We can give the replacement name. This is Ajo, and Ajo is at the one point, so it is one Aja. Then you have Naphthalene. This is uh, general name, this quinoline. Similarly, you have isoquinoline. Here, the nitrogen is at second position, nearby the junction, second position. So, here, numbering when you will give, definitely you have to take this is as one. Okay, You don't take nitrogen as one. Okay, number will start, overall number will start nearby the junction point. Okay, so junction point you have four points. So this is you have to take as one, and then this will be two. So your nitrogen position is two. So if you give the replacement name, it will be two as a naphthalene. And the Hans Wiedemann nomenclature will be so this is will be A this will be b and this is c okay. so it will be c which is the common bond between benzene and pyridine so you have uh, name will be benzo c pyridine or two as an okay. now here one point is important uh, with respect to the uh, basis okay so here if you have 
now quinoline i mean the pyridine quinoline and isoquinoline if i want to know which one is more basic among these three how i will uh, i mean give the answer can anybody just predict which one will be the most basic one pyridine quinoline and isoquinoline which one will be the most basic can anybody just predict any idea no one when you talk about basicity that means it is donating the electron pair to the proton so what you take as the pkah okay so the pkah of pyridine quinoline and isoquinoline we take the value is 5.2 this is 4.9 this is 5.5 though they are very close but you have distinct differences now this one is having maximum value okay and this one is having minimum value now when it is donating it is generating the pyridinium okay similarly have here nh n plus and nh n plus here also the quinoline isoquinoline or now if this is this protonated forms are stable that means you have basic property the more stable the protonated form is more will be the basic the parent compound okay now from this pk value of this protonated form what we find is that this one is having 4.9 the minimum pk that means this is more acidic this protonated form is more acidic according to acidic property this protonated form is more acidic than this pyridine than isoquinoline so quinoline protonated quinoline is more acidic than pyridine than isoquinoline okay now this protonated form the stability you can think like more the regenerating structure more will be the stable compound is the protonated form so you have pyridine you have this is kind of we have positive charge generation here then if this one will migrate then this one will migrate you have another positive charge here so this way you will have number of uh, regenerating structure similarly if you go for quinoline and isoquinoline definitely the number will be more more regenerating structure than pyridine that means protonated quinoline and isoquinoline should be or expected to be more stable than the protonated pyridine right because we have more regenerating structure in the case of quinoline and isoquinoline and if that that is the case only then you should have pka of quinoline and isoquinoline more than the pyridine but what we find is that pk of quinoline this protonated quinoline is less than the pyridine right less than the pyridine that means it is not only the regenerating structure or the resonance which is uh, which we have to consider for the stability okay now when you think about the protonation always what we see is that the protonated form its stability in the solvent right and the solvent when we talk about when you are doing acidification so we have the aqueous medium in general so the stability of this 
protonated form is also been guided by the solvation. Okay, so this protonated form, what can happen? Your sol solvating molecule or the sol uh, solvent molecule is doing hydrogen bonding with the proton. So if you look at here, you have pyridine here the aqueous water. Now this water oxygen is making hydrogen bonding and that way it does the solvation. Okay. So more the solvation, more will be the stability. More the solvation, more will be the stability. Okay. Now here if you look at, you have another molecule. Okay. Can anybody guess whether this molecule will be more basic or less basic with respect to others? So what will be the pKH or what will be the pKa of the protonated form? Whether that will be higher or lower of these values? And if you actually try to search, you will find, or if you do experiment, you will find this pKa, pKa of the protonated form or the pKH of the non-protonated form is 4.11. That means this is much more uh, acidic in its protonated form and non-protonated form is less basic. Okay with respect to period in quinoidal isoquinoline. Now, stability of this kind of uh, protonated compound, what we find is that there are two factors. One is resonating, resonance, another is we have solvation via hydrogen bonding. And governing factor is the solvation. That is the main thing. Uh, now, if you consider the pyridine, what you have to have the solvation, the water molecule has to come to the close proximity of the hydrogen. Okay, so this hydrogen water molecule has to come to the close proximity. Now, you have the ortho position two hydrogens right in the period and if you look at the distance that is they are not parallel right these two bond are not parallel that means they are having more distance than the parallel position okay so in this case what we see is that the water molecule gets a little bit enough room to come to the close proximity of the proton okay which is connected to the nitrogen and that's why it can do hydrogen bonding and give the uh, and then and do solve uh, solvation okay now if you look at uh, quinoline okay quinoline so what you have here in this case you have hydrogen and this hydrogen and this hydrogen, they are parallel to each other. So they are parallel. Okay. And that's why your room, what you are getting for pyridine is not that much. And that's why when water molecule will try to approach, it will feel a kind of hindrance. Okay. Rather it will come from this direction because you have hydrogen this side you will get more uh, room so your water molecule will come from this direction so what we see here is that one directional solvation for pyridine it's two directional solvation okay that means this molecule quinoline in its protonated form is not solvated properly that means this is not going to be stabilized 
as compared to the pyridine okay and that's why you see this pka is low okay if it's not stable means this is not getting solvated and that means this is going to break that means this proton can easily come out that means it is more acidic in nature okay. now if you come to the isoquinoline what you have you have the pyridine environment right so two hydrogens at the ortho positions they are not parallel to the hydrogen which is attached to the nitrogen okay. so that's why you have solvation proper solvation from both sides okay that means this protonated form of isoquinoline is stabilized more due to solvation and you have definitely more resonating structure so that will be more stable so comparing these two factors or in combination of these two factors overall this protonated form of the isoquinoline is much more stable okay and that's why its acidic property is less that means the parent compound basic property is more okay and that's why you see pk value is higher here and this is lower okay so lower now if i consider this one now you can put the argument you have both side now you have hydrogen right and if you protonate here both side you have parallel so that's why your solvation will be much less that means this is this will be much less stable when it is in its protonated form that means the proton can be easily accessible so the protonated form will be more acidic so it will have less pk and non-protonated form will definitely be less basic i mean more acidic because you have more h plus generation and non-protonated form will be opposite means more uh, less basic okay. protonated form will be more acidic and non protonated form will be more basic uh, sorry less basic more acidic less basic opposite okay now in exam you may find suppose i may give a different type of questions i may ask suppose you have pyridine okay and you have uh, you have methyl pyridine okay two for dimethyl pyridine in that case which one will have uh, I mean which one will be more basic okay if you can give any other substituents to the ortho position or i can ask suppose you have ortho position and para position okay i can ask like this one so you have this method another compound i can ask the four methyl okay between these two which one is more basic okay so what you have to do you have to consider the protonated form and then you have to look at what will be the situation okay so here solvation will be difficult because you have bulky methyl here one side solvation here both side solvation okay that means protonated form is more solvated means more stabilized so it is less acidic in its protonated form and more basic in the non-protonated form okay so that will be the situation so this point you have to uh, carefully note down now we'll straightforward go to the synthesis uh, now if you look at quinoline it is fused with benzene what you have to do like pyridine you have to construct the fused pyridine ring so you can consider the benzene okay you can consider the benzene and then just look at the pyridine ring so you have nitrogen 
and try to break and then find out the suitable uh, substrate. Okay. So always consider the hetero ring construction rather, I mean, in preference over the non hetero ring. Non hetero ring constructions are much more difficult than the hetero ring construction. So all the synthesis, if you go through, you will find people are just synthesizing the heterocycle ring one. So one of the important and well-known synthesis for isoquinoline, I mean quinoline, is the combus synthesis. And this is a three plus three rule. So three plus three, when you are talking, as I told, your benzene should be fixed. You cannot break it. So what you can do, you can take like one, two, three, Okay, and here from it can be cut, so you can have another one, two, three. Okay, so this type of disconnection you can consider. Let us look at how people have done. People have done that one, so this is a substituted aniline. So this aniline, and people are taking the one, three diketo. Okay, one, three diketo. Now, if you treat aniline with one, three diketo, what is going to happen? You have double bond O, you have NH2, so immediately you have imine formation. Okay, so this imine is formed. And now you have this carbonyl. So after that, you have the equilibrium, and here you have active methylene position. So the proton will be, it will undergo protomerization. Okay. And that is happening, so proton transfer via tautomerization. And now this nitrogen can do its lone pair donation, and this way it will it will uh, activate the compound for doing the CC bond formation. Okay, so you have CC bond formation, new CC bond formation, and this one we do here. So this is going to happen. This one will be much better if you just add a tiny amount of acid. Okay, so cat catalytic amount of acid. So that will uh, make the reaction more facile. So it will be more faster. So this way you have the reaction and it will generate this one now it has to undergo uh, aromatization so dehydration so we are, you, here you have hydrogen okay. you can have neutralization and then you can again call it this can move and you can have dehydration okay so ultimately water will come out and you have ring formation now in this case what you have seen is this is the your three position and you have another three position, this carbonyl you are taking and two carbon. So you have one, two, three. So one, two, three. Okay. That way you have three, three carbon addition. So you have one, two, three, and you have the formation. Now, similar way you have another reaction that is also three plus three root, we know as Honard limb patch in our synthesis. Here actually quite similar with the combust synthesis. In place of diketo, one three diketo compound or diketo or dicarbonyl compound, keto compound, you have beta keto ester. Ultimately you have one three position carbonyl group. Okay, only you have the ester. So here is the ester if you look at. Now room temperature reaction, what it will do between this and this, which one is more electropositive center? This center, right? So that's why this is kinetically controlled. If you allow the reaction at room temperature, this reaction is going to happen here. Okay. Immune formation. So you have immune formation followed by Tautomerization, okay, proton transfer, you will get this one. And now it's similar to the combust synthesis. If you hit it, what will happen? You have CC bond formation. So 
to fill flow here okay and then you have movement followed by this elimination so you have four position with respect to nitrogen you will see the double bond and that can uh, double bond o and that can undergo uh, it can it can be converted to hydroxy by proton transfer okay so this is going to be formed now interestingly if we look at here so this equilibrium and you have seen like uh, four keto position four position keto of the pyridine it can make the hydroxy right so this this we have seen now interestingly this reaction is uh, temperature sensitive and regioselectivity depends on the temperature of the reaction what you are doing how you are doing okay now if you look at suppose you are doing the reaction at the beginning with temperature means a high temperature you are applying so what if you look at at 140 degree what you have doing you, are, you have taken the aniline added this one three diketo i mean the beta keto ester and heated it directly don't allow to room temperature reaction okay so you have initially you just started heating so what is going to happen now you have thermodynamically controlled reaction and you have nucleophilic reaction will be taking place at this center because this center is less reactive okay with respect to this so this is now going to react at high temperature why it is releasing oet so your entropy is increasing and that's why you have the reaction at the center and if you look at it will generate this as your uh, intermediate compound now you have to have uh, cc bond formation or the ring closing and that if you hit further what we see is that the same reaction happens okay so you have hydroxy formation followed by uh, elimination of water okay so you'll have this connection oh then you have water elimination because this center you have hydrogen so it will eliminate water okay finally you have so after that water elimination hope you understand this point i i'm not drawing the exact molecule here because each, each time this drawing will take a lot of time so you have to guess and you have to practice that this way you will get the compound like this and if you look at this one what you are saying these two if you compare it is just the uh, regio isomer right so you have methyl here methyl methyl here four position here two position here two position here four position here c double bond or two position here c double bond o, four position so they are regio isomer okay so this reaction is important in that aspect because this is temperature sensitive reaction if you put high temperature you get one regio isomer if you do the reaction at lower temperature at the initial stage you will get another isomer and finally you will have the uh, alpha hydroxy formation okay so you have Another reaction which is again 3 plus 3 root, we call it the scarp synthesis. And this scarp synthesis is here if you look at uh, instead of 1 3 diketo, what is taken here is the uh, alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Now, this one is interesting. This one you can get it from glycerol. Okay. CHO uh, so glycerol dehyde you have here now this glycerol dehyde from here to here you can well, I mean this this one will be the uh, can be synthesized from glycerol okay. okay, 
so you have just need to remove these two OA and you have a double bond here. Okay. Now, this particular compound, if you use under acidic condition, you have azamichael reaction, right? So you have one for addition, we call it azamichael reaction. So this nitrogen is attacking here. Okay. So you have azamichael reaction and that's, that, that's how you are synthesizing the CN bond formation. And then you, if you generate this one, after that, you have uh, a ring formation, means CC bond formation, and that is guided by this lone pair of nitrogen. So we have the action here. And when you have, you, it will be generating the alcohol, and then just heat it, so you have the water elimination, and it will generate this one. So this will be aromatized. Right, this will be aromatized. It will generate this one, and then sir. yes, tell what is the rule of uh, say so uh, OA is always no, no, this is uh, what I'm telling is this is the precursor to make this compound alpha beta unsaturated. Means this is proton aldehyde, okay? This is proton aldehyde, yes, sir. This aldehyde we can make from glyceraldehyde. Okay, glyceraldehyde is the compound from here you can make this proton aldehyde. Understood? So, this is uh, uh, that, that is I am telling. So, you have CH2 waste. This is so from here you can have this compound. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so that is the thing. But proton aldehyde also is cheap. You can you can purchase also, it's, it's not too much because. It's, very you know you have only three carbon system so three carbon system is cheaper okay but still glycerol dehyde or yes, glycerol sir. is more important more uh, available right glycerol is very common so that's one i mean can be utilized as the precursor to synthesize this proton that uh, that uh, is the point i think now in this process what you are ended up with in the previous cases you directly got the pyridine right substituted pyridines but here you have uh, partial unsaturation so one step you have to do more here that is the oxidation right so that you have to do a suitable oxidant generally the iodine is quite uh, sufficient for this aromatization so this is another synthetic group, uh, quite important stop synthesis. Now, in this case, what you have seen is uh, the reaction is guided or driven by the addition of sulfuric acid. You can do the reaction in presence of Lewis acid too. Okay. And that is this is one of the examples. So you have zinc chloride utilized or so what I was telling is you can do the same reaction in presence of Lewis acid, so zinc chloride or ferric chloride. Okay, and here if you look at similar thing, you have alpha beta unsaturated carbonate. Okay, so this one it will it will give you uh, the compound ultimately uh, if you do the oxidation of the last step you will have this as your product okay this as your product uh, so you will try the reaction mechanism here okay so this is important where is the substituents okay. this methyl where it is Suppose you have here one substituent. So I can give different types of, suppose you have another uh, substituent here. So suppose this is another I have given, okay. Here I have given methyl, here I have given ethyl, okay. So what will be the compound? Can anybody tell what will be the structure if I take this one? If, if, if this is my, uh, 
alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound and i if i react with uh, aniline in presence of lewis acid what will be my ultimate product after the last oxidation so what will be the product can anybody tell what will be the product Can you tell in the presence of uh, methyl, the mm. so you have here methyl uh, for position. So this is first you write this one. You don't have any substituents at the aniline, so you have beer aniline. So uh, it is going to be pyridine. I uh, sorry, phenolic. Uh, now you have to put two substituents you have one substituent is ethyl another is methyl so where i'll put ethyl where i'll put methyl so with respect to nitrogen at two position i have to have methyl at four position methyl. Ethyl. okay so this is the thing okay this is the thing what you have to notice so here many different types of one to uh, alpha beta unsaturated carbon compound can be utilized okay and based on that you can have different uh, substituted uh, phenolic okay now another important reaction which is we know as the fried lander synthesis this one is 4 plus 2 root, okay? 4 plus 2 root. So this reaction, you have uh, two different condition. One is acidic condition, another is basic condition. The acidic condition, if you look at here, the substrate, 4 plus 2 means you have to take 4. So here, if you look at 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 4. And here you have one, two, okay, or one, two. Get it? So two carbon will be based on this one. Now, if you use the acidic condition, what we see is that at, uh, so we'll have first the imine formation. So this is double bond here. You have NH2, first imine, then you have tautomerization, okay? Then you have tautomerization. And this will generate this as your intermediate. And then you have CC bond formation. So this is falling here. This is attack. Okay. <clears throat> so you have CC bond formation followed by dehydration. That will give you the substituted pyridine. The same compound, the same reagents, if you take and do the reaction at uh, low temperature and basic condition, what is going to happen? So KOH you were using as the base. Now initially you have the imine formation. Now here, what you have, you have alpha hydrogen here and here, right? Methyl and here CH2, both are alpha to the carbon carbon. So initially imine was there. Uh, if I write the structure, it will be more easier maybe. So this is your, you have N, this is double bond. And now you have this, okay? I'm not right, okay, let me write this is also. This is pH. Now we have methane, we have proton here, you have proton here. If we use base, <coughs> what is going to happen? This is abstracting from this place, proton, and you have this uh, enolization or enolate, okay? And that's why you have proton ultimate connection here, you have a double bond here. So this is we are seeing. Now you have 
uh, the CC bond formation. So proton can abstract the, I mean the hydroxide can abstract this one, this alpha to the dissolved bond. That's why it is acidic, and it is also connected with nitrogen. So that's why it can fall here. It can make the bond. So CC bond formation, which will generate the hydroxide, and your cup bond will be this one. Now look at just what you have done. You have changed the reaction condition. Everything is same. You just change acid to base. Okay. And your product is completely different. Both are periodic, but the substituents are different. So this one is important. Pride liner. So acidic and basic conditions give you regio isomeric product in proteins. Now, another reaction synthetic route is fit ginger synthesis. Now, this one it is started with this compound. Uh, if you look at, you have again four plus. Uh, two type. If this one you take it in presence of KOH, so KOH is going to uh, break this bond. KOH will attack here, hydroxide. Okay, and this will open. So that's why it is ME, ME, and this C double bond O is here. This is carboxylate. So this is the carboxylate. Now this one, if you look at one, two, three, four. So, if you, you treat with another uh, carbonyl compound, so you will get this one. So you have Me C double bond O CH two O pH. So C double bond O CH two. So that is so that means you can write like this one. CH two O pH. CH two this is O pH. So you have. Here we say here you have CH2. So these two centers are reacting. You have the carbonyl carbon, pass the amine formation, and then you have this position CH2. So that will act as uh, that carbon will act as a nucleophile. So it will attack here. Ultimately, you will have this compound. You will, you will try to make the mechanism from here to here okay try to practice this one this mechanism how it's coming other routes you have uh, alkyne mediated route nitro so nitro is there first is that nitro you can reduce now this one if you look at this is one five plus one two five plus one Or you can think like not five plus one because this is just cutting. So you have actually six zero. Sorry, six zero means there is no extra reagent. Okay, uh, reagent means substrate. So you have just this one. And this one, what you do nitro, you just reduce with the uh, metal and acid to get the amine, and then amine will react. At this center. So I mean, it will it will make the I mean NH2. So NH2, the N will attack here. At this center, you have uh, protonation, followed by you have dehydration. Okay. So ultimately, you will get this as your compound. This one also you will try. Okay. So this is one. I'm telling where it will it will attack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is you have carbon, this you have carbon. First is the NH2 formation. Now the NH2 is going to attack here. You have a double bond. So that double bond uh, is going to be neutralized. So it will fall here. It will take the proton. You have NH2, another hydrogen, another, I mean, uh, you have the, it will be. Let me draw, maybe it will be more easier to you. 
so it will generate nh2 okay uh, it will generate nh2 nh2 now you have this nh2 is going to attack so ultimately you have this double bond and this n connection okay and you have d time here you have OH, okay, hydrogen. Now this, you have lone pair, so it will fall here, it will go, this will come out, okay. So under refluxing condition, this dehydration will take place and then we have aromatization, okay. So this will happen like this. Another route, again you have uh, the single molecule conversion. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Methyl is here and is here. So you have kind of aldol type reaction. So hydroxide and this methyl and this double bond O, we have aldol type reaction. Okay, so this is making double bond. And now you have lone pair, so it will move like this way. So you have hydroxy. Okay, so these are the different types of uh, synthetic roots okay. different types of synthesis of pyridine derivatives uh, now let us go to another uh, compound which is isoquinoline In isoquinoline uh, as i have shown you it is the two position nitrogen here also it is similar we have three plus three root so in three plus three root this is Homer range uh, free synthesis. So what we see is here, you don't need to remember the name. Okay, the name is sometimes difficult. Few important names like scarf synthesis and the, that one, this less synthesis, those are uh, quite popular. But more importantly, you need to know the substrate and if that substrates are there, how they will react. Okay, suppose here, this has your company. Now this is, you have another story here. You have NH2, so alpha amino aldehyde, CHO. Okay, so this is alpha position amine and CHO. Now aldehyde, if you add alcohol, you can be, it, you can make it ketone, right? So this is the thing. You are adding alcohol and making ketone. Now free position like amine and aldehyde if you have like this one, that compound is not stable. Okay, in the market, if you want to purchase, it will be difficult because that is not stable. What happens? You have aldehyde and you have amine, amine. So the two molecules they can combine and make the amine bond, and this way you have polymerization. Okay, the free single molecule getting is difficult. That's why. Uh, it is being sold by in its ketal form. Okay, so this is the way. Now, if you have benzyl dehyd and this ketal, alpha amino ketal, we have amine and double bond O, so immediately it will make the amine, right? And if you have amine, now we have alpha position, this position you have hydrogen, so it can undergo. Uh, so what we see here is in presence of proton this will be protonated and like this way you have come out okay so this will it, it will come out so we have ultimately oet or ethanol elimination and the double way, it will do another way, so that another way it will come out. So ultimately, you will have uh, the uh, isoquinol information. Okay. So this is the thing. Remember, you don't have nitrogen here. C double bond O. That means this is carbon. That is, you have to look at it. Carbon is required. Okay. So you can break here, and this one. N you can make NH2 and this one you can make double bond. Ultimately it will be double bond O and this side will be NH2. And you can cut from here, ultimately you will get this one. 
another reaction we have Wiesler uh, Nepplerski synthesis. We have five plus one root. That means what you have to do if you look at five plus one means this is here you have to take out. Okay, you have to break here and here. And this is separate one. So this one. So you have one, two, three, four, and this five. What you need here another carbon source. Okay, and that is you will have used here acyl chloride or acetyl chloride. Now, if you do that one, you have lone pair, so it will attack. Cl will come out as Cl minus. So acetylation, or acylation, and then you have a CC bond formation. You have hydrogen here. So if you use anhydride like. Uh, this dehydration process takes place if you use uh, P4O10, phosphorus pentoxide uh, dimer. Okay. So this is going to happen. And now we have to do oxidation. Now here we look at the reagent what has been used, palladium carbon. Okay. Now palladium carbon is a interesting comp composition. If you use hydrogen in presence of palladium carbon, it is going to do reduction. It, it will be considered as a reducing reagent. But if you don't consider hydrogen, if you don't provide hydrogen, just palladium and carbon, what it can do, it can act as oxidizing reagent. So it can take out hydride from the substrate. Okay. So that is the thing happening here. So this is this two hydride is. So you have a double bond here that is happening at the high temperature. Now quickly you have another 5 plus 1 group here. What we see is that uh, formaldehyde is used instead of uh, acetylation or acylation. So if you use formaldehyde, what, you, what is going to happen? You have NH2 formaldehyde, so immune formation. Now just do acidify it so you'll have a protonation here and that will make this one trusty so electron cloud will come from this direction okay and that is happening so you'll have it uh, cc bond formation ultimately what you have to do is finally oxidation so this one you'll get it and you just do the oxidation to aromatize this ring Reagent mild oxidizer will be fine because uh, this type of compound has a tendency to go to form the aromatic compound. So the easy access of these hydrogens. Okay. Uh, so iodine or nitric acid will be fine, no problem. Then do oxidation. Okay. So that's all uh, you have. A different synthesis synthesis of quinoline and isoquinoline. What we will see in the next class, the reactivity, which are more important. In the next class, we'll be discussing the reactivity of quinoline and isoquinoline side by side, comparative reactivity. Okay, so you go through this one and try to practice the mechanism. I didn't give the details mechanism. This one for your own practice so that you can do. I just gave the route. And here I have verbally told how it will happen. Okay, so your job is to complete the practice. Don't need to give as assignment, but it is all your own benefit. So you just need to solve those things. Okay, so if do you have any queries, you can uh, discuss quickly. Otherwise, we'll stop here and we'll meet tomorrow morning. Anything you have to ask? Sir, uh, six plus uh, six plus zero. Yeah, six plus zero means you don't have any other reagent. Okay, let me tell you. Suppose this one. Okay, this one. What you see here? This nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all the system all the atoms are within the molecule okay that's why 
you, you just need to connect these two. That will make the compound. You are not having any other uh, substrate. Okay. In other cases, what you have seen, look at others. Uh, say, suppose I am giving uh, this one. This one. This is 4 plus 2. Okay, so this 1, 2, 3, 4, and another substrate is this one. Right? When this is attached, this stage, now this one you can consider as the reaction is happening from here to here, from here to here. This is 6, 0. Because we have all the carbon and nitrogen are here in this molecule. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? So this from here to here stage, we have the 6, 0 connection. This is 6, 0 connection. But here to here, you have 4 plus 2 connection. Got it. So similarly, if you look here, we have all the ring, con ring uh, constructing atoms are here in this molecule. Right? So that's why you have uh, 6 member ring, 6 atoms are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's why 6, 0. There is no <coughs> other external uh, atom coming from any other external reagent. Did you get it? Okay, sir. Yes. Okay, okay so you just practice the mechanism. That, that is more important. Okay, then I'm okay, stopping sir. here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for attending to this lesson.